There is no law or what? Me, I just don't understand. This, this <coughs> decision there, mm -mm. no. Okay, now bring in uh, lawyer Sefo yeah. now because he's also a private legal practitioner. I left that out in the introduction, but this is what the dissenting judges said, and I'd like us to put Justice Lovelace Johnson's position on the matter of jurisdiction. It says, "Quote: It is my opinion that in matters relating to the vacation or otherwise of a parliamentary seat." A plaintiff has no choice in the matter. They must go to the High Court. The jurisdiction of the High Court is exclusive. That's Justice Lovelace Johnson. And she goes on to make reference to some other cases. And this is what the other dissenting judge also said, Justice of the Supreme Court also said. Justice Tanko Amadou says, and I quote, I do not hasten to proclaim that I have apprehended with despair the majority's conclusion in this suit, but I state with utmost difference to the Honorable Chief Justice and the rest of my brethren in the majority that not only do I fundamentally disagree with their conclusion, I with all due respect also find the decision an aberration to the established and accepted judicial position of this court which with profound respect i hope in no distant future the resultant usurpation of the constitutional prerogative of the high court incidental to the majority decision will be reversed in fact he's hoping that this this decision has reached on this matter the majority decision will be reversed soon the conclusion i have arrived at should in no way be construed as suggesting that the Supreme Court is not the appropriate forum vested with jurisdiction to interpret and or enforce the Constitution in appropriate circumstances. The point which I unequivocally emphasize is that it is the same Constitution, 1992, which vested exclusive power in the Supreme Court in matters of interpretation and enforcement of its provisions which also des des designed the mechanism for this court to assume jurisdiction. Thus, although this court has a general jurisdiction to interpret and enforce provisions of the Constitution, there are situations, such as in the instant case, where the procedure, and he makes emphasis on the procedure adopted in invoking this, the Supreme Court's interpretive and enforcement jurisdiction, has deprived the court of the power to exercise that jurisdiction. In fact, it goes on to, to say a number of things, but I'll put here because as far, what exactly was the original relief that Alexander Fenyo Markin went to the Supreme Court seeking? Because I recall that there was an injunction that was filed, right? Even before the speaker delivered his decision, correct? Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it, yes. Did you amend that particular earlier that's application well, it, before it, the Supreme it, Court? It needs not amended before. Why is that? Before, before the Supreme Court could have assumed um, um, jurisdiction to have dealt with the matter. But let me state that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. And that Constitution is very clear when it comes to <clears throat> interpretative powers that is given to certain courts, i.e. the Supreme Court, based on the combined effect of Article 2 and 130, has the interpretative powers to deal with provisions of the 1992 Constitution. Mm -hmm. In the case of Human Law Court versus the AG, the Supreme Court had the occasion to establish that when it comes to issues of interpretation, the Supreme Court has jurisdiction. When it comes to issues of enforcement, the Supreme Court also has jurisdiction. And the Supreme Court also has jurisdiction to be able to deal with both, that is, interpretation and enforcement at the same time, i.e. they are disjunctive. Number two, there are instances where 
the Supreme Court will assume jurisdiction to deal with matters of interpretation. And that has been stated in the 1980 case of S. Party Akusa. In that case, the Supreme Court has the occasion to state that where there are real and genuine issues bordering on interpretation, mm -hmm. there are certain instances or there are certain condition precedents that will have to be satisfied. And Asari Daku had the occasion to reiterate this in its judgment. Now, it says that, A, and I read, where the words of the provision are imprecise or unclear or, un or ambiguous. This is ex parte Akosa in 1980 case. B, where the rival meanings have been placed by the litigants on the words of any provision of the constitution. And it goes on and goes on and goes on. This reinforces the combined effects of Article 2 and 130. That any time there is an interpretation issue bordering on the 1992 constitution, it is the Supreme Court that has exclusive jurisdiction. The Honorable Afenyo Marken went to court to invoke the exclusive jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to interpret Article 97. Reading mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the dissenting opinions of um, Madame Lovelace, that is JSC Lovelace, mm -hmm. that this should be the sole prerogative of the High Court to deal with such a matter because to her, it is not an interpretation issue. Yes. But mind you, even if the High Court was the one dealing with this matter, it will, at a point, still refer any interpretational issue to the Supreme Court because the High Court will not be able to have the jurisdiction to interpret the meaning of what Article 97 is. And it is on that matter that Justice Amado Tanko raises that the procedure that was employed raises a fundamental issue. In fact, it makes the intervention and the entertainment of this case by the Supreme Court null and void. No. Because the point you make that no. even if it goes to the High Court no. and there's an interpretation matter that comes up, then it's referred to the Supreme no, Court. I disagree. Dealt with and, no, no, and I disagree. Come back because to the High Court. there are two cases that I'll cite to you. Michael Ninfa versus um, Jachi Kwesin. And also, the case of A.J. Kim Ampofu versus the Attorney General. A.J. Kim Ampofu and versus, um, versus Attorney General was where the plaintiff went to the Supreme Court to enforce fundamental human rights of persons, which his own fundamental human rights was not affected anyway. Mm -hmm. But the Supreme Court felt that, yes, it is of public interest. And for that matter, we will assume jurisdiction to deal with that matter. It does not need to go to the High Court for the High Court to refer the matter back to the Supreme Court for interpretation before it will also refer it back for the High Court to go and deal with the matter. Michael Nufava said, Judge question. The Supreme Court had the occasion to say that you cannot question the interpretative powers of the Supreme Court just on the basis that it has concurrent jurisdiction in the same course of action that is before the court, i.e., the High Court also has some jurisdiction to deal with the matter because the course of action before the Supreme Court is that of issues that borders on fundamental human rights. But okay. if the Supreme Court has concurrent jurisdiction with the High Court on an issue, as far as interpretation of an issue is concerned, the Supreme Court can assume jurisdiction as far as interpretation is concerned and deal, mm -hmm. with, the, uh, and deal with the matter. It is in the same vein that a federal market went to court to seek for the interpretative powers, or if you like to invoke the interpretative powers of the Supreme Court to interpret what Article 97 is. Now, when you go to Article 97, and we have to read that as a whole, and that is why I, I disagree with my senior colleague, Martin Pebu. 
Reading Article 97 as a whole, nowhere does Article 97 suggest when you read from um, Article 97B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. The G and H was the matter that was in contention, or the two provisions that were in contention. But if you read B, C, D, F, reading that as a whole, nowhere does it suggest that these provisions were dealing with issues of the future. No, because if you read the B, it says that that is a C. <coughs> If he is absent, that is, a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament. If he is absent without the permission in writing of the speaker and he is unable to offer a reasonable explanation to the parliamentary committee on privileges from 15 sittings of a meeting of parliament during any period that parliament has been summoned to meet and continues to meet. This is current status, current issues. It does not have anything to do with future. B, okay. if he is elected as a Speaker of Parliament, you vacate your seat. It has nothing to do with the future. That is why I'm saying that we have to read the whole Article 97 as a whole. If you also look at the D, it says that a member of Parliament shall vacate his seat in Parliament if he is expelled from Parliament after having been found guilty of contempt of Parliament by a committee of Parliament. It has nothing to do with future. It has everything to do with the current status of the member of parliament. If you also read the C, it says that if any circumstance, that is a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament, if in any circumstances arises such that if he were not a member of parliament would cause him to be disqualified or ineligible for election under Article 94 of the same constitution. It has nothing to do with the future. It has everything to do with the current status. The F, where I will end, is if he resigns from office as a member of parliament by writing under his hand addressed to the speaker. This also has nothing to do with the future, but it has everything to do with the current. And so it beats my imagination for anybody to put any interpretation on F and G, uh, on G and H that they are issues that is bordering on an intention or a declaration to be part of the next parliament. Alfred, mind you, no, our no. election is a process. It's a process because you have to start from somewhere. No, 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 wait, okay? Wait, wait. okay? You have to start from somewhere. Alfred, let me finish. No, no, no. Our election is a process. You have to start from somewhere. Today, it is within my right as a Ghanaian, if I'm 21 years of age, to join a parliament. But I have okay. to start from somewhere because the parliament is going to start on the 7th of January. And the mm -hmm. processes are that it's either I join a political party or I go independent. Now, if in my estimation, I decide to join the next parliament, which is the ninth parliament, which is within my fundamental human right to join that parliament, it presupposes that I should trigger a process before I can join that parliament. Now, if I'm a member of this current parliament, mm -hmm. for example, now a member of parliament for Old Tafu constituency, mm -hmm. and I decide that after the social contract that I signed with my people, for me to stay in parliament for four years, okay. within the next four years, I do not want to, as it were, do business with my party, which is the New Patriotic Party. Mm -hmm. It does not deny me of my fundamental human rights to join the next parliament, just on the basis that I have decided to do business with another political but, party. But, but, because but the, the decision any the other constitution, like the New Patriotic Party constitution, is subservient to the constitution of the, of, of the Republic of Ghana. So The constitution of the Republic of Ghana is supreme, and Article 11 will tell you, and will, 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 will exhibit to you that when it comes to sources of law, the constitution okay. is the supreme law of the land. Any other law that is seen to be inconsistent with this constitution of the Republic, <laughs> per Article 1, and Article 2 is inconsistent to well, the extent of the inconsistency shall be declared as null and void. And this includes your, your party. The Absolutely. That's what I'm saying that the fact that there has been an unconstitutionality, and that is why I agree with Martin Pebble, that an unconstitutional act, even if it is repeated 100 times, cannot be constitutional. So the reason why I ask you this question is, you say uh, that, uh, no, no, no. No, 
Come on, yes. I, 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 the, I'm saying so. He said that he disagreed with us. He says it's the, everything is this man, yeah. not future. Yes, yeah, that, that's what that's the point <laughs> I'm trying to come to. I'm listening. To the extent that you say that the decision to contest mm -hmm. in the future mm -hmm. parliament yes. as a sitting member of parliament, yes. in your view, sh there is nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. You, as a political party, mm -hmm. there is a reason why you put point nine in your constitution mm -hmm. about the forfeiture of membership mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. It was to check a situation, is it not? Yes. And this is the situation that has arisen. Yes. That a member of your party mm -hmm. has decided to go independent. Mm -hmm. And upon taking that singular decision, mm -hmm. your party's constitution says mm -hmm. the person has forfeited his membership mm -hmm. automatically. Mm -hmm. That's automatically. Mm -hmm. Is that to say that your provision in your constitution is unconstitutional Please, this is and you Alfred, have to amend and Alfred, take it this out. Is, this is legality. This is issues that borders on legality. I have suggested to you no, that I, the, the I, I, constitution I just, of the new patriotic party is subservient to the constitution of the Republic of Ghana. So you're saying it that your party's be, constitution, it cannot, that provision in there is, is unconstitutional. Please, I'm just, I'm just suggesting to you, I'm just talking to you about law. I'm just, I'm just telling mm -hmm. you that anything that is found in the MPP constitution if there is a provision in that MPP constitution, which is at variance with any provision of the 1902 constitution, to that extent, it is unconstitutional. I see. So the point I'm making is that the Supreme Court had the occasion to establish what cross carpeting is. Okay? So cross carpeting, in the mind of the Supreme Court, is having every issue to deal with your current status. If you decide that me today, as a member of parliament for Otafo, mm -hmm. and I decide to join another political party in the same parliament, that is what we call cross -capital. So what is You cannot use the same meaning to affect any member of parliament who have decided to do business with another political party in a future government, so in a future that, parliament. Then what is the consequential <coughs> effect of violating Article 97? If the consequence applies in the outcome of your future decision. What's the consequence? I'm saying that. I'm saying that. I have a social contract with my people. That social contract is for me to stay in parliament for four years. Okay. Okay? Uh -huh. Now, within that four years, if I decide to change my allegiance to the party that brought me to parliament, that is problematic. That is cross carpeted if I decide to do so. But mind you, it is within my rights as a Ghanaian, if I'm more than 21 years, to be in parliament or to contest to be in parliament. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Get you. To be in parliament. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that you cannot use a party's constitution to deny me my right under the 1992 constitution to join the next parliament. Just on the basis that I have declared an intention to do business with another political party. So if my intention was to join another political party within the same parliament where I have signed a social contract with my people, that I'm coming to parliament on the ticket of the new patriotic party, but I am changing or I am variating that social contract that I had with the people, then that is a problem. So, so you're okay with it? That as these persons have declared their intention to contest independent candidates, the court says they will stay in this parliament, they will sit with you as a cohort right. in your strategic meetings. You will not take them off your WhatsApp pages. They are part of every meeting that you conduct. You are okay with it? The Supreme Court had the occasion to, as it were, rule that whatever conclusions that came by with respect to Professor Michael Quay is, un is unconstitutional. There were not any anticipation as to whether the New Patriotic Party, in writing that letter that they sent to Professor Michael Quay, will repeat right. itself the way it has been repeated today. Uh, but the point uh, I'm trying to make. You didn't you, anticipate that it will, it will come up again. See, see the, point, the point I'm trying to suggest to you is that, see, the fact that it happened previously. And the new patriotic party was okay with that. Doesn't make it constitutional. 
because it is the law that we are talking about. The law is that if a person decides to join another political party in future, it does not negate or affect my current status in parliament. And that is what the Supreme Court came by. That, is, that, that was the conclusion no, but, of the Supreme but that, Court. That's what, the, and, and you see. So you, you may you have, go, you may you've, disagree. You've, you've, you've gone round, and, and I asked you a specific question. Right. You've gone round and round of it, and, and you are not answering that specific question that I asked you. If I decide that I'm contesting as an independent candidate right. in a future election, right. I'm part of your current parliament. Yes. And you are saying that as a caucus, yes. you are okay. So no, no, the no. answer is wait, that wait. can you leave that for the party to decide? Let's talk about what but the constitution says. But you are just saying says. that the no, party's constitution forget, forget is, about is, that. Is, is, that is, is, no, that, that should not be. I can't forget. Not, that you, are be so forget. you are saying that the party's constitution. You are saying the party's constitution is is uh, is now don't meddle in the mind of it, it, it is irrelevant. It is no, irrelevant it is because very, very relevant. these people are more than eighteen years. They can think for themselves, and they have decided to do business with the the new patriotic party whilst they stay in parliament. They are only declare, declaring an intention that in future I'm not going to do business with the New Patriotic Party. And Why that, are you so much interested in our caucus platform? No, and no, 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 wait. That's, the that's, constitution that's, that's, of the Republic wait, is what is wait, important. That is at variance, that decision, that's at variance with your party's constitution. And I'm saying that the party's constitution that the party's is subservient to the constitution now, of the Republic of Ghana. That provision in your constitution, a forfeiture of membership, a member of the party who stands as of an independent candidate. Wait, 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 wait. A Stop member of the party the who stands minor. as an independent candidate against the officially elected member of the party or who joins or declares his or her support for another political party or for an independent candidate, when the party has sponsored a candidate in a general by election, automatically forfeits his or her membership. You're saying that this provision is unconstitutional 